finally tonight, remembering world-renowned singer Dietrich Fischer Dieskau. He was a master of opera and leader, the classical German art song, a prolific performer and recording artist who became one of the leading musicians of the 20th century. He died Friday at the age of 86. Here's a clip of Fischer Dieskau singing a section of Franz Schubert's Winterreiser. The performance was recorded in 1979 with Alfred Brendel playing the piano. Weise stehen auf den Straßen, weisen auf die Städte zu. Und ich wandere sonder Maßen ohne Ruhe und suche Ruhe. Und ich wandere sonder Maßen ohne Ruhe. And joining me now is Anne Majette, the classical music critic for the Washington Post. I could see your concentration watching that. It's beautiful, yeah. isn't it? It's beautiful. <laughs> it's a wonderful song, a wonderful cycle, which one of, of course he recorded eight times. Eight times, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. Now, one of the great musicians of the 20th century, but why? What, what makes him so? Well, I put that in the obituary partly deliberately because there's a canard that singers are not really musicians. <laughs> and Fischer Dieskau exploded that canard, perhaps the exception that proves the rule, and that he uses his voice like an instrument. He has such supreme technical mastery of the voice. He can really do anything he wants with it. He could sing any any vowel on any note and with any shade of coloring. And one thing you can't see from just seeing him in one clip is the way he would change his style and his approach for different music. So when he was singing French opera, he sounded French. And when he was singing Wagner, he sounded rich and profound. And that kind of mutability and ability to immerse himself in music is one of the, is a very hard thing to achieve. The, the, the art song, the German leader that we just were hearing, that he so uh, personified, exp explain a little bit what that is and the role it plays in the world of classical music? Well, there's a mystique about the art song, which is almost unfortunate because it leads newcomers to music to think that it's very dry and abstract and serious, as mm -hmm. the clip indeed we just saw sort mm -hmm. of puts forward. Um, but it's basically a song. I mean, the song is the most basic unit of music. Um, the mystique has grown up because it's great poetry, or sometimes kind of schlocky poetry, set <laughs> to great music by wonderful composers. Mm -hmm. And it forms a real cornerstone of the vocal repertory, particularly German art song, because there's a lot of it. Mm -hmm. um, and Fischer Dieskau dominated that area as no one else, probably before or since. It truly became his calling card. But that's a little unfortunate in that it it keeps us from appreciating the range of his musical ability, which did go beyond the art song. And I don't think I fully realized until quite recently what a formidable opera singer he was, even of Italian opera, which we don't associate with him at all. I think Fischer Dieskau was the voice of German music to many people, but uh, they who don't realize that he could also do Italian and French and even English. Well, whether in opera or in those art songs, 
more recordings than any artist ever? That's what I, I read, and I, that kind of stunned me. I believe that's true, although as one of my editors said, some Motown record recording artist from Detroit is going yeah. to come and say, I played bass well, okay. on so he's 1500. Up, but he's at least up there in, he in made, the world record. He made something like 1,000 LPs. Um, there was an article in the New York Times in 1980, which he was still very, very active, pointing out he had recorded almost 3,000 songs. He had recorded 59 complete operas, 117 oratorios. I'm, I hope I'm getting those figures mm -hmm. right, but I'm in the ballpark. I'm mm -hmm. um, just an incredible volume and um, prolific artistry, and the fact that he could approach that broad a spectrum with such focus is. It's remarkable. But that also made him the voice for millions of people who care about this music, I mean, because of those recordings. And you said eight, eight times recording just that Winterreiser by Winterizer. Schubert. Yes, uh. yes. And especially, I think, for American listeners, because he didn't sing opera, if, if at all, very seldom and never at the Metropolitan Opera in America. Most of his operatic work was in Europe. And so we knew him almost exclusively as a singer of these art songs and these recitals, which were sort of a... a pinnacle for many music lovers. All right, we're going to continue this conversation online, but for now, Anne Majette of The Washington Post, thanks so much for joining thanks us. Thanks for having me.